The Phenomenon of Sidney Jackson. What Sidney Jackson did as the founder of Uzbek boxing was incredible. When they enter that ring, they are paying tribute and homage to that great man. One of his students wrote that he is one of the sights of Tashkent. A real boxer, a born talent, clever, you know, and wise. He was, of course, a wonderful teacher. For me, my first lessons, my first training came from Jackson. When he worked, he used to say, boxing is a mental form of sport. In the ring, you have to think. In my opinion, he was a great coach. Those principles aren't important only in sport, but in life. I owe him a great deal. He was simply like a father to everyone. The destiny of this man, his truly amazing life journey and everything he did during his years in Uzbekistan for sport in our country is a subject of special pride for all of us in Uzbekistan. The hero of our film is the extraordinary American boxer and coach Sidney Jackson, who became a legend of Uzbek boxing. Sidney Jackson, the founder of Uzbek boxing, arrived at a time when a new state system had just been established. Of course, those were very difficult times. But his zeal to develop sport and his love for boxing, we can see their results in the way our Uzbek boxers compete very successfully nowadays in many international competitions. And today the Uzbek boxing school is recognized as one of the very best. Of course, his contribution was immense. Sidney Jackson was truly beloved by our athletes. All boxers in our region acknowledge him as the founder of our school of boxing. The challenging course of his very interesting life shows that if a person has a dream and is determined, he can achieve his goal whatever the obstacles. Our boxers prove that every day in their efforts, achieving brilliant results in their physical training. They fight in the boxing ring with the top sportsmen in the world. There are many interesting and important pages in the history of boxing in Uzbekistan. There were moments of greatness, there were moments when our sportsmen did not do so well, but all that taken together, I can say, laid an excellent foundation for our boxing to become today among the strongest in the world. And the indications of recent years prove that we are on the right path. Without a doubt, I express gratitude to the founder, the father of boxing in our country, Jackson. I think that when our boxers enter that ring concentrating with nervous anticipation, they are paying tribute and homage to that great man. All those people who worked in boxing for many years in Uzbekistan laid the basis, as I said, to make good progress and achieve impressive results and victories in the international arena. I think the basis that was established by the founder of Uzbek boxing continues to work. The trainers only make the changes required by the changing nature of the sport, innovations which are good for the development of boxing. His path in life was hard though, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Especially the beginning, that was very hard. Hard because he was a person with no relatives until he started his own family. My mother's family liked him very much and accepted him. 
but he didn't have a single relative to say a warm word to. That was awful, really. When he left the United States, Sidney Jackson was one of America's most popular boxers. His bouts and outstanding victories were reported widely in the press, and photographs of him appeared more and more frequently in newspapers and magazines. At a very young age, he became an idol of the American public and a star of boxing. That was when his incredible journey to different cities and countries of the world began and his final stop was Tashkent. We are now standing on the street where Sidney Jackson used to live with his family. Paina Sidneyevna, please tell us, what do you feel being here now? Nostalgia, of course I feel nostalgia. This street used to be called Sverdlov Street. Number 9 was here, number 11 on the corner. We lived in number 9. I just wanted to say why it's important it was 9 Sverdlov Street. When my father created the first sports association, it had no building as such. He and his friends made a flat open area, they stretched out a net and made a volleyball court, but they didn't have their own space. And where to go to decide all these organizational questions? There wasn't anywhere. It was the 20s. In 1922, he rented a room at 28 Samarkand Street. And on all the adobe walls in Tashkent, in the old town, far on the outskirts, in the center, on fences, on trees, there were signs saying there's an association called Fortuna, which invites young people to join sporting activities and become part of the association. All organizational questions to be decided at the home of Sidney Lvovich Jackson, address 28 Samarkand Street. And the second address, that was here, at 9 Sverdlov Street, and instead of 28 Samarkand Street, they wrote 9 Sverdlov Street. Jackson was born in New York in 1886 in Brooklyn. He had to work hard from his earliest years, but loved sport and finally decided to become a professional boxer. Success came to him quite quickly, which allowed him, in the tough economic conditions in America at that time, to provide for his mother, who was widowed young, a sick brother, and his sister. Sidney Jackson was training to compete for the world championship title, but fate decreed otherwise. In 1914, Sidney traveled with a team of American boxers to the birthplace of boxing, the United Kingdom where a series of fights with British boxers had been arranged. During one of his first fights, he hurt his hand badly and had to undergo treatment in a local hospital. After the rest of the American team had returned home, one of his teammates, the son of a Chicago businessman, proposed a trip to Russia to travel around and do some business. That's how Sidney got to St. Petersburg. The outbreak of the World War prevented him from returning home via Europe. The American consul advised him to go to Turkestan and try to get to America from there. In this way, completely unexpectedly, he ended up in Uzbekistan towards the beginning of the 20th century and stayed for the rest of his life. Папа же не
Did your father ever regret his decision not to leave Uzbekistan? I knew my father from the time when I was grown up. By that time, he'd worked successfully for many years. I personally never heard him express any regret. He'd made a good family, he'd created a marvelous school, he was very successful and very respected. In our country, everyone knew and respected him. One of his students wrote that he is one of the sights of Tashkent. Life isn't all about material wealth, you know. The fact that he was a monument of Tashkent, that he was respected, he was respected in the whole former Soviet Union, because I remember every holiday we used to receive regularly a few hundred letters from top sportsmen, and they all wrote, Dear Sidney Lvovich, esteemed Sidney Lvovich, I think it created such an aura. Of course, he was very pleased. In the very center of the city, a lovely mansion which had belonged to Grand Duke Nikolai Konstantinovich Romanov was given over to be used by the children of Tashkent, and various clubs held their activities there. Jackson was put in charge of the boxing club. Thus was formed Uzbekistan's first sports association called Fortuna, with the first junior boxing group. Sydney marked out where the ring would be, and together with his original trainees, they nailed, wove, joined, and assembled all its parts. The felt-covered platform, the corner posts and pads, and the other elements of a professional ring. There wasn't a real ring as good as that even in Moscow. After that, they cut and sewed sacks and punching bags. Jackson went to a shoe factory and a slaughterhouse to ask for the leather and horsehair they needed. It's hard to believe that a sports group met in this lovely, beautiful building. And what's more, a boxing group. Strange, isn't it? In which of those gorgeous rooms could it have been? And how did it look? It's the symbolism, it's very symbolic, that the new life took over in a building that had been a symbol of the old era. Young people, children, did sports. They became individuals here. Here, they got a taste of the new life their parents were creating. The very fact that one of the most beautiful buildings in Tashkent was given over to children, that says a lot. My father was both very kind and very tough. I, for one thing, we all owe everything in our life, of course, to father's upbringing. He taught us all to be decent people because he himself was, first and foremost, a profoundly decent person. He taught us to be hardworking. If I achieved anything in medicine, and wrote books, and made other accomplishments in medicine, that is, of course, thanks to Father. Diligence, kindness, and love for other people. You understand, he loved people. That was probably one of his main features, and people reciprocated. He had that kind of aura. It was right in this gym in 1952. We boxers from Spartak Sport Club, students of Yuri Vadimovich Buchman, came here to spar with boxers from the Dynamo Club. This is where I saw Sidney Lvovich Jackson for the first time. We knew he was American, we knew more or less that he'd come to live in Uzbekistan, and we boys looked at him with awe. Why? First, 
He had striking looks with that short, cropped gray hair. He wasn't tall, but Sidney Lvovich had a wiry build and a very pleasant, kind voice. He would go up to each of the boys from the old town. He would straighten their shorts, check their shirts, check their hair, and say to his student, Yuri Vadimovich Buchman, Yuri, that boy didn't take a shower today. And we all simply froze before Sidney Lvovich's authority. I remember I was sparring right here with Vladimir Magaronov, who had a Master of Sport degree. I didn't know he was a Master of Sport, a student of Sidney Jackson. I had a habit. I used to close my eyes. I was 15 years old, and I'd close my eyes when I got hit. Sidney Lvovich said to Yuri Vadimovich Buchman, let's put him with a strong boxer, but we won't tell him. So, we were sparring. It was this big guy, and I was thinking, my God, I'm a skinny 15-year-old, you know? It was right after the war. They'd only just ended bread ration cards. I'm moving around the ring, trying my best. I, I get something going, and that boxer moves back, jumps away from me. And I think, what's he doing? Is he afraid of me? And I started going for it. And Sidney Lvovich shouts, uppercut, uppercut, Hamrayev. And since I was short, he was right. He was saying I needed to do an uppercut, but I was normal mid-height. But anyway, I launched a series of punches from below. And I won that fight. I didn't close my eyes after that. I only learned about three months later that was Vladimir Magaronov, master of sport. Sidney Lvovich was a wonderful teacher. Moreover, he was a brilliant coach, a natural-born boxer, smart, you know, wise. He was also, of course, a great teacher. I'll never forget Sidney Lvovich. I was a boy. It was 1964. I lived in the old town, right next to the Spartak Stadium. They said Sidney Lvovich Jackson, an American, an older man, was training people in the Palace of Pioneers. And the boys and me decided to go to the Palace of Pioneers. We got there, and he started asking, how are you doing at school? How are your lessons? He asked all that. I thank my lucky stars. He made a man of me. I started training with Sidney Lvovich and learned the basic principles of boxing from him. Many of his students in Tashkent went on to become famous boxers and coaches themselves. Among them Vladimir Agaronov, Yosef Budman, Boris Granatkin, Yuri Buchman, and the Luxembourg brothers now living in Israel. There were also the Uzbekistan and Central Asian champion Vladimir Karpov, who was awarded Hero of the Soviet Union during the Second World War and later became a famous writer, journalist and social activist. And the champion of Uzbekistan Andrei Borzenko, who passed through the German concentration camp at Buchenwald during the war and is the hero of the novel The Ring Behind Barbed Wire. Every one of his former students and associates whom we met in the course of making this film remembered Sidney Jackson with feelings of deep respect and spoke of him as an outstanding coach and a wonderful teacher. These qualities stood out especially in the case of the sporting career of the first Uzbek world boxing champion, Rufat Riskiev. Jackson was his first coach and he remembers well and with pride that it was Sidney Jackson who paved his way to the world of top-tier sport. He had almost 190 fights in the course of his boxing career, of which he won 174. He won the World Championship title in Havana in 1974. It took five tough fights, two of which he won with knockouts. 
His fight in the final of the Olympic Games in Montreal in 1976 was the stuff of high drama. He emerged with the silver medal. He considers all his successes due to the brilliant foundational training and sports education he got from Jackson. Sidney Lvovich Jackson was my first coach. The guys and I went for acrobatics in the Palace of Pioneers. We lived there on Navai Street. I went with them too. They left and I stayed. Then they went to box with Jackson. I went with them. They left and I stayed. And he gave me my first lessons. I got my first lessons and what I consider my foundational training from Sidney Jackson. I got my secondary training from Baranov and my higher education from Granatov. Jackson was elderly. He was a pensioner and led a group for himself. Stance, the right ways to punch, footwork, good breathing. He used to say, breathe through the nose, ventilate your lungs. He definitely paid a lot of attention to that. A lot of boxers don't breathe properly and tire quickly. Among his students were heroes of the Soviet Union, PhDs, candidates of science, famous people. When he worked, he used to say, boxing is a mental form of sport. In the ring, you have to think. And this attitude of his, his words passed into those people for their whole lives. Sidney loved all of his guys so much, all of his students were at his house, he celebrated holidays with them and their birthdays. It even happened. There was a heavyweight, and when he met a girl, before marrying her, he took her to meet his coach before he took her to meet his parents. That's how much authority Sidney Lvovich had, his father-like qualities. We Uzbeks say your teacher is equal to your father. That's how he was for us, on the level of a father. This great man was blessed with many talents, not only as a sportsman, but he had an ability to train the will and to inculcate proper manners and behavior. Sometimes we fought on the street. A lot of us did when we had to. And he used to say, Boxing is not for fighting. You do not use your skills on the street. Boxing is a sport. Those principles aren't important only in sport, but in life. I owe him a, a great deal. I was too young to meet Sidney Jackson, but I heard a lot about him. I consider him a great coach. I trained with Sidney Jackson's student, Mikhail Borisovich Frank. He was awarded honored coach of the Republic of Uzbekistan, may his soul rest in peace, and honored doctor of the Republic of Uzbekistan. He trained many famous boxers in Soviet times. His students included Soviet prize winners and finalists, finalists of the Spartakiads of the USSR. That was Jackson's student who I trained with, and I learned a lot from them, how to coach, how to train, and so on. I have that foundation, and whatever I know, I pass on to the Uzbekistan team. Sidney Jackson was, uh, you might say, a pioneer in U.S.-Uzbekistan people-to-people ties. He didn't know he was. He was it was an accident. Uh, he ended up in Tashkent really by a, a twist of fate, as we would say. Um, being there during the war, not being able to leave, um, and then finding a home and making a home for himself in Tashkent. Um, it was an accident, but he was, in a sense, an ambassador of American culture in Uzbekistan. And today, we do a lot of these things. We have a lot of these exchanges, but Sidney Jackson was the first. Um, I also would say that um, his contribution to um, the culture and sport of 
uh, Uzbekistan and the whole Soviet Union was very significant. And I think it's worth celebrating that, and I know you will celebrate that through your film. Uh, I know that he was hugely influential and essentially created the sport of boxing here in Uzbekistan, where it was pretty much unknown, as I understand, at the time that he came here more than 100 years ago. Um, and, um, and I should also note that um, he did a lot beyond boxing and sport. And uh, I thought it was especially remarkable that he, through his own efforts at self-education, became a professor, a university professor, uh, at the Institute of World Languages, a very prestigious institution here in Tashkent, and a professor of English. And uh, I think that's symbolically very significant also because today, here in Tashkent, the U.S. Embassy is helping the Ministry of Education to teach English, to improve the teaching of English. So I view it as we're, we are carrying on in the tradition of Sidney Jackson. We are continuing his legacy even today. Uh, so it's a remarkable story. It's a symbol of the relations, the warm, close relations between the United States and its people and Uzbekistan and its people. And uh, I'm really glad that you're making this film and I'm happy to participate in it. In one of the best boxing clubs in Jerusalem, a portrait of Sidney Jackson hangs in a prominent spot. It shows Jackson at a time when the four Luxembourg brothers, Ilya, Gregory, Mikhail, and Yakov, were in the boxing group at the Palace of Pioneers in Tashkent and being trained by Sidney Jackson. He was a great man, a very rare person, an American citizen, and altogether, we see to this day, it's the nature of the American people to respect people of different faiths, different religions. It's right to say it's like a melting pot of people of all nationalities. Sidney Lvovich Jackson passed on to us that attitude to respect other people and other nationalities. Among the boys there, there were lots of Uzbek kids training, lots of Jewish kids, lots of Russians, Tatars, everyone. And we were all together in that melting pot in the same way that the whole American nation is. We felt the same love and care from that man. He simply became a father to everyone. For me personally, he was a second father. Till today, I see him truly as my second father. He taught me as much as my own father. He absolutely took care of us all the time. The connection was so strong that even our parents became friends of his family. Many people ask me, how do you know all these boxers? I never boxed. But I knew all the trainee boxers. They all grew up in our house. Our house was open. Mom was the generous presiding spirit of the house. She welcomed everybody, and I hung out with them. That's how I knew them all. And that's why all problems got resolved at 9 Sverdlov Street. And Dad rode a bicycle. There were hardly any cars. I don't even remember anyone who had one. Our gate was here. He rolled out his bike, rode to the corner, turned onto Zhukovsky Street, from Zhukovsky to Pushkin Street, and straight to the Palace of Pioneers. That used to be the mansion of Duke Romanov. He used to raise the handlebars to the maximum, back straight. He always had his curly, gray quiff of hair, and he was one of the sights of Tashkent. And People told the time by him. They said, hmm, Jackson's gone to work. That means it's almost seven o'clock. If all Sidney Jackson's trainees could be gathered together, even if they stood close to one another, they would not fit in the Palace of Pioneers in Tashkent from which they once emerged. But what a sight that would be. All grown up now, broad-shouldered, strong, although some are almost 60, wrote the writer Yakov Kumok reminiscing about his favorite Tashkent trainer. 
It's impossible to count up all their titles, awards, and professional achievements, not to mention the thousands of medals and diplomas that they would have between them, and the number of newspaper clippings offering them praise. Jackson headed the boxing school. He was at all the competitions. He trained the city team, the national team. When we were preparing for a competition, he coached us. His contribution is priceless. All the boxers of our generation grew up with him. And now, all the boxers fighting today are first or second generation trainees of the coaches trained by Jackson. Once I asked my father, Dad, you're such a kind person, why did you choose boxing as a sport? I think, you know, it's about hitting people. My father answered me, and I've remembered this my whole life. I think it was a very wise answer. He said, boxing is a very intelligent game. Most importantly, you need to think with your head. You are completely mistaken if you think it's about beating someone up. Picture an enclosed space in which two men meet, like two military commanders who have to maneuver their interaction, their game, their fight, in order to beat the other one. That's why you have to use, first of all, your head. Your feet have to work perfectly to go back and to avoid punches. And third, you need a strong, powerful punch to be able to defend yourself and to hit your opponent. So, you see, that's why it's a game of intelligence. It's reminiscent of two admirals or two generals in an enclosed space so there's nowhere to run. Can you really call that just a punch-up? That's the essence of his school. He taught people to think in the ring. Sidney Jackson laid the foundation for the Uzbek school of boxing. And like any distinguished school that has its traditions and continuity, it attracts new students, new names and boxing stars. And the Boxing Federation, whose building we're standing by, also organizes all kinds of assistance so that the wonderful work that Jackson started goes on. It's flourished. What's more, if you remember, the whole Federation and the whole Uzbek boxing school began in a small room where Jackson lived with his family, with his kids, where he made his plans to develop boxing where he did the necessary paperwork and trained for future tournaments with friends and like-minded people. And to think it grew into this, this building, big wins. The sporting world has not forgotten how medals rained down on our victorious boxers at the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. But that was only the first thing Nobody even imagined that our team would surpass all the greats of world boxing and win seven gold, silver and bronze medals and take a distinguished first place in team scoring. Demonstrating their excellent preparation and an incredible will to win. Hassan Boy Dusmatov, Fazlidin Gaib Nazarov and Shahobidin Zoyrov became Olympic champions. Silver medals went to Bektemir Meriguziev and Shahram Gyasov. Murajon Ahmad Aliyev and Rustam Tulaganov contributed bronze medals to the team's total haul. Bahadir Jalolov won the silver at the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. In the final, on the last day of the Olympic Games, he faced the American super heavyweight Richard Torres Jr. After a dramatic fight where the boxer from Uzbekistan showed his great determination to win, 
he emerged victorious. The idea of publishing such a book arose at the Boxing Championship. Paina Sidnevna and I were sitting together. We started talking about Sviridov's book that came out long ago in the 1960s called Jackson Stays in Russia. Well, I looked around and I said, Paina Sidnevna, he didn't stay in Russia. He stayed in Uzbekistan. Let's gather together recollections and write what we know. Let's collect the memories of everyone left, his students, his successors. And we published this book, Jackson Stayed in Tashkent. We gathered memories from everyone alive at that time. I remember what good shape he was in even when elderly. You'll find photos in the book how he jumped rope better than anybody else could. He jumped a skipping rope, switching hands, even though he was pretty heavy. He used to make interesting observations, which I now apply in my own life. I tell my son, we once lived in the Canadian town of Vancouver, we had to shelter from the rain, and I started showing him some boxing moves. He was trying to do them quickly, and he was hurrying a bit. And I said, you know, Sidney Lvovich often used to say, hurry is not speed. In the first year after Jackson passed away, it was decided in Uzbekistan to organize an international boxing tournament in memory of Sidney Jackson. It was held for the first time that same year in 1966 and continued regularly up to 2015, the year before the Olympics, when all attention was devoted to preparing for the Olympic competitions in Rio de Janeiro. First Vice President of the Boxing Federation of Uzbekistan, Saken Palatov, considers the revival of the tournament in Jackson's memory an international priority. Hello, Father. I visit you often. You've been gone almost 55 years. I never forget you, not for an instant. Thank you. The name of this remarkable man, who became a patriot of Uzbekistan, will be in the history books of Uzbek sport forever. To this day, the great coach's legacy helps Uzbek boxers win medals of silver and gold. Very important competitions have been held in recent years. We're taking on the organization of large international boxing tournaments, championships and World Cups in our country, which also raise interest in boxing. Attention is being paid to this at the government level, and in the future I trust our sportsmen will justify the confidence of millions of fans and lovers of the sport in our country with their victories and success on the global stage. <laughs>